By the end of 1942, Soviet troops marching from Stalingrad had rushed towards Rostov, to cut off the Germans' escape route out of the Caucasus. The commander of the 16th Panzer Grenadier Division, Major General Gerhard von Schwerin, got instructions to pull his division back to Rostov by the 10th of January 1943. He'd been covering roughly 300 km wide gap between the 1st Panzer Army and the 4th Panzer Army for months, but his division had been outflanked. Furthermore, the Soviets were on the verge of fulfilling their objectives, which included splitting up Army Group A first, then blocking the 1st Panzer Army's withdrawal route to Rostov, and finally cutting off and destroying the 17th Army, which was pulling back from the Kuban bridgehead. The Major General's first objective was the Menich River and its crossing point. There was a nearby village named Samodorauka, occupied by the enemy. It was clear to von Schwerin, that Samodorauka was one of the pivotal points on the front, and that he had to hold this village with all the means at his disposal, in order to thwart the plans of the Soviet leadership. By late in the evening of 14 January 1943, the division's motorized formations had made their way through the heavy snow, to the Soviet positions. Major General von Schwerin, issued the order to attack the next morning. Standing in the open hatch of his commander's vehicle, company commander Gerhard Tebe thrust his hand three times into the air. The steel giants of Panzer Abteilung 116 of the 16th Panzer Grenadier Division started to move out. The tracks of the tanks made crunching sounds. They crushed the vegetation beneath them. The sheets of ice on the ground shattered like glass. On the left flank of this steel assault wedge were the Panzer III's of Oberfeldwebel Hans Bunzel's platoon. Hans Bunzel was a seasoned soldier who had served as a tanker since the very beginning in 1934. During the French campaign, he worked industriously as a maintenance section leader, and was even presented the Iron Cross second class, for his performance under fire while recovering an immobilized Panzer III near Belfort. Shortly before the start of the campaign in Russia, Bunzel became a tank commander and a section leader. Bunzel suddenly remembered that he had been on an operation, at this exact location nearly a year before. However, he was forced to return to the present when he heard his company commander's voice over the radio. Watch out! 11 o'clock, 1,000 meters away, enemy stronghold. Bunzel's gunner reported a few seconds later that he had identified the target. He began to aim his gun in the general direction. The Panzer III came to a halt to fire. Soon after, the main gun went off. A short lance of flame left the muzzle of the main gun, and the first round was racing towards the enemy. The round pierced the cover put in front of the Maxim machine gun position, causing a pile of ammo to catch fire. The engagement had started. The rattling of enemy machine guns and the thunder of main guns firing from tanks, filled the early morning hours of the 15th of January 1943. There was anti-tank gunfire, all along the frontage of the attacking wedge of tanks. Rounds smashed into the ground, tearing loose clumps of earth that had been frozen hard. Orders and warnings, tips and reports zipped back and forth, reaching the commanders of the individual companies. The tanks took turns, in firing halts. Identified enemy anti-tank guns were eliminated, and the tanks continued to roll forward in platoon-size groups, toward their objective. The high ground to the rear of the enemies dug in position. Commander Tebe oversaw the battalion's operations. 
he ordered the companies to advance in three assault wedges, to split the enemy's fire. All three assault groups, breached the enemy's defenses. T-34, 12 o'clock, 1,000 meters, reported the commander. Bunzel's gunner had identified the target. The tank halted. After taking a few seconds to get a final lay on the target, the report of the main gun could be heard. A flashy light illuminated the region of impact, indicating a strike. The enemy, on the other hand, had not been knocked out. A muzzle flash could be seen from the T-34's long barrel, and the round was smashed into the ground not more than 10 meters away from Bunzel's tank. Bunzel's loader had already slammed another round in the breach, the second round raced towards the enemy. On the far end, there was another hit. However, the enemy tank did not go up in flames until the third round. The companies advanced, boxing their way through enemy positions, collapsing trenches and firing at enemy anti-tank guns, which had immobilized one of the German tanks. Four of the feared 7.62cm anti-tank guns were destroyed. Suddenly, two T-34s arrived from a patch of woods on the lower slope. They advanced quickly on the third company, opening fire with their long-barreled main guns. One of the T-34s was quickly knocked out by a vehicle from the third platoon, as Hans Bunzel observed. Then the second tank turned around and fled, despite the hail of shots that were fired at it. The three tank assault groups arrived at the high ground, one after the other. They reorganized and then fired their way into the village of Sporny. Machine gun fire rained down on them, from windows and behind the ruins of walls. Anti-tank rifles joined the fray, firing lethal rounds at the oncoming German tanks. Bunzel ordered to load the HE ammunition. The high explosive rounds pounded into the identified pockets of resistance. They were all silenced one by one. Through the bulletproof glass of his vision port, Oberfeldwebel Bunzel spotted muzzle flashes that revealed the location of the enemy. He coaxed his gunner into the targets, which he then had in his sights. The gunner's trained hands silenced the targets one by one. All of the tanks continued to move forward. Bunzel was then tasked with capturing the Menich Dam, before the Russians blew it up. His platoon had done it, and they established a bridgehead that they could hold until the mechanized infantry arrived. At the same time, Oberlieutenant Klappich's unit, had neared the eastern outskirts of Samoderauka, through a thickening wall of snow. Soon, it was man-to-man -man fighting that was raging in Samoderauka. Buildings and open spaces were cleared, in a systematic manner. The grenadiers soon arrived at the western end of the village. The Germans had finally captured the village, and started to establish positions there, The Russians were making plans, for another attack. When Hauptmann Tebe, received news on the morning of January 17, 1943, that the Germans had been expelled from Samoderauka once more, he committed his second company, led by Lieutenant Gitterman, and yet another Panzer III platoon. Even as they were blasting the enemy out of the village and re-establishing themselves, Soviet tank strikes on the village resumed, this time from the rear. The commander of the 3rd Company was the first to notice the approaching enemy. Hans Bunzel also received the warning, that he radioed to his comrades. Hans Bunzel gave his first order to fire. With his first round, his gunner knocked the track off, of AT-34. The enemy vanished without a trace, after a few dozen rounds were fired at them. Strong snow squalls, whipped into the tank commander's faces as they stood in their cupolas. It was cold and dreary. 
But, as every tank commander understood, it was critical to eject the enemy from Samadarauka once again. Oberfeldwebel Bunzel, who was leading his platoon, tried to see through the swirling snow. Suddenly, muzzle flashes could be seen from tanks and anti-tank guns shooting across a span of two kilometers. Rounds were fired against the German tanks. They smashed into the earth, creating fountains of snow mixed with steel. The company commander issued orders to advance by platoon, and one platoon always providing cover. The tanks accelerated as quickly as they could. The tank crews fired, round after round at the enemy. Enemy rounds smashed into and penetrated steel hulls, leaving fighting vehicles on the battlefield as burning torches. Bunzel ordered to pull forward 30 meters and stop. The tank moved forward, and the crew noticed, a T-34. Its turret was traversing towards them, with its long trunk of a main gun. But before it could traverse completely, the shell from Bunzel's tank, struck the T-34 squarely between the turret and the hull, dislodging the turret from its mount. Bunzel knew exactly what he had to do, his platoon's vehicles followed him. They rolled forward in the face of the oncoming wall of fire. Every time they came to a halt and fired, one more anti-tank gun or tank was silenced. Both Gitterman and Bunzel destroyed several enemy tanks. Six T-34s and six anti-tank guns, as well as a handful of anti-tank rifles, were captured before the end of the battle. Samadarauka had been taken from the enemy's grasp, for the second time. Hans Bunzel and his platoon continued to fight at Samadarauka and the group of hills at Zadorkin, which were occupied by the enemy. Hans Bunzel was nominated for the Knight's Cross for his actions, which he received on February 10, 1943. If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.